So now that we have just completed our update user route API, now we have to finish the functionality for it. So right now, suppose if I sign in now, right now you could see that there's this sign in button, but uh, you know, we could sign in either with email or password, or we could also sign in with Google. So let me just sign in uh, on the same time. Let me just have the console, uh, which is actually the application. And over here, you could see that I'm uh, basically getting signed in. Uh, and what the thing I have to show was network tab. And you could see over here that I get a response um, from Google saying that it's okay. And you know, it gives me a response of this. Okay, now let's go to the profile page, which is click on this and it will navigate you to the profile page. Again, now you could see that my, uh, my username is existing and my password is also existing, which is awesome. Um, and the next things that we need is, uh, to basically have, um, the ability to update uh, now the things like, suppose if I change this, I want it updated using my API that I created. So let's get this started with, let's go to the visual studio code. And over here, what we're going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to first, you will see that I'm in my root directory and there's nothing there. Let's go to the client side here. We're going to have to go to the source and then we're going to go to the pages and we'll see the profile.jsx. Let's just move this. And you can see over here um, where I have the input fields. Suppose I had this email, I have this password and I have this, uh, and I have this username, email and password. And over here we have the default value set to the, you know, the current user and current user and, you know, nothing here because we don't want that displayed, right? It's just going to be a hashed value from the database. So essentially what we want to do is we actually now want to uh, have the on change handle uh, event listener to basically l listen for changes and, you know, perform that. So let's go here right after the default value, we could have the uh, on change and that equals to it equals to a method which is called handle change. Okay, and we're gonna have to create it because right now it's just gonna give you an issue. At the same time, we have to make this uh, for this one as well, for the email, and we also have to make it for the password. So it's gonna be for the password as well. So right after the placeholder, let's just add it right here. Okay, so yeah, right here. Okay, so let me, Windows V and one minute. Windows V and there. Okay, so now that we have all of this created, which is perfect, um, you know, the input password is all there, handle change and everything. Um, and now we have to create this function up on the top. So I'll go over here um, in bef uh, before the return. And over here, we're going to create it right after, you know, this, this thing that we've created uh, to have the use effect and then this file hand, uh, handle file upload. So right after that, we'll create your, uh, our handle change function. So the handle change function is pretty, pretty simple. Um, so let's just create that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create this handle, uh, handle change function. So let's go here. And over here, I'm going to have const and I'm going to have handle change. All right. And we're going to have event for that event. Let's just close it for now so that the error is gone. Okay. At the meantime, what we want to do is we want to handle the change. So what I, what it actually means is that remember that all of these input fields have their own IDs specified that this has an ID of username. This has an ID of pass. Uh, so this has an ID of email a username, and then this one has a password ID. So what we want to say is that we want to set the form data. Remember that uh, state that we created before, uh, and, and the state is over here and this collects all, where is it? Uh, it's essentially here. So this basically collects all of the information regarding the form. It has the avatar as well. And it says, whatever the existing form uh, is, preserve that. Like suppose uh, I just, 
Okay, so it says existing form data, whatever is there, use the spread operator and say, okay, but if there's any new changes, right? If there's any new changes, you target the IDs of the field and you make them equivalent to the target value that you put input. So it's just gonna trigger it. Um, and essentially I got like one extra here and that's why you know it's happening. But other than that, everything looks good. So this is the form data and you know we could actually trigger the results. If you want to see this in live action, you could actually go here and uh, right here, you could just console.log, you know, the, during the states over uh, where you create your use states, you could just say uh, form data right here. And this is going to automatically tr uh, get changed and updated every single time. If I go to the inspect and console, you could see right now at the moment, you could ignore all this. I'm not sure if this is because of this, let's just refresh it hopefully that's not going to be there right now you know it's just an object and the object has some of the values but let's suppose let's suppose that we have coding cleverly and th this is kjbx now if i type in one two three you can see it's uh, automatically detecting and updating the object for me right which is perfect now the same goes for the email if i just change this suppose the last name and i just delete this now you can see that the email has been updated as well. And the same goes for the password, which is amazing. We are tracking it, but now we want to update it as well. So let's go in and, you know, things are looking really good. Um, and, and that same goes for the uh, picture I, I wanted to show that if I go and go to the application, uh, which is the console, um, you know, right now it's okay. And, you know, the states are preserved, but suppose if you want to click on the uh, image and you want to change it to this, at the moment, you could see image successfully uploaded and it changes the image here uh and you could see that the you know it's stored in firebase as well so essentially what i wanted to see was the percentage i, I didn't see that and also it didn't reflect on the header over here but you know the image has been updated and if you go to this url that it says you know this one this is basically stored on firebase so i'm just gonna go to and you could see that we have, oh yeah. So Firebase, the, uh, I guess it's the same URL. Oh yeah, I guess, it, no, no. There's some uh, dot dots that are missing. I mean, it's not the complete URL. Um, so essentially we have to find, maybe I copy, maybe like this. Okay, let's just copy this. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, it, it gives you the strings as well. So let me just remove the strings from it, uh, from, you know, you actually see the string here. Yeah. So, and over here, which is I'm holding control and moving the arrow key so that as faster navigation. And now you can see that logo has been uploaded on Firebase, which is great. Um, and, uh, this was just random. Uh, and now what we want to do is, you know, the image is successfully uploaded and if I refresh it, it's going to go back. It's not basically being updated actually. And you know, the email and everything else also went back. So this is the problem. And let me just fix the loading, uh, thing from there as well as the header. So let's go here. And I remember, uh, this was essentially, uh, in the, uh, profile, right? So in here we have the handle file upload and we had this, uh, update state, right? All of this is working perfectly. Everything seems to work here. But the problem that is concerning, right, that right after the profile image. So let's suppose we go to the uh, profile.jsx, right? And we go to the image, which is form. And inside here, we have this input field. We made it gone, so it's hidden. And here we put the reference to it. So file reference current and click. So we put this file ref. So that's, that's why we are able to click this and, you know, if we are allowed to change the image. But over here, this paragraph had to be triggered and this had to show us the percentage uh, for the progress, right, of how the image is being uploaded. So let me just quickly see where uh, where the thing has been missing. So it says over here, class name. And the moment I have to just charge my laptop. So let me just quickly get the charger for my laptop. Okay. And let me just... Uh, Put this on quickly. Okay. 
Okay. I think we're good. The laptop is charging. Perfect. Okay, so now what we have, you know, the major concern was that the paragraph. So the paragraph has a class name of text small, okay, self center, great. File upload error. I said if it exists, what you're gonna have to throw out was a span error and say, you know, um, you know, you gave a span tag and you say error image. Yeah, great. But you know, it didn't give any error uh, issue related to that, which is a fine. But the ex next case was if the file percentage is greater than zero and file percentage is less than 100, what you wanna do is you wanna give a span class name and say text hyphen slate hyphen 700 and uploading file percentage, right? This is the thing that we wanted to showcase. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't being displayed uh, at all. Um, and then we had, or if the file percentage is equal to 100 and we wanna say image upload uh, successfully uploaded, um, and this is working. I mean, it was triggering, but in the other case, if you have nothing, just uh, leave it as nothing. Okay, so um, this is the paragraph. I mean, it is like that, but again, um, the file percentage, if I look at the file percentage, this is basically uh, coming from that same thing that we were, uh, you know, we created. So if you look over here, File percentage over here was specified as zero as well. Um, and then if you go down a little, if you go down, we have this upload task uh, dot on. We have state unchanged snapshot. And then we have const progress is equal to snapshot dot bytes transferred. And then we have slash snapshot dot total bytes multiplied by 100. And then we have set file per percentage and then we have math.round, and then we have progress. Essentially what we're doing is we're setting the uh, set file percentage to that round, uh, round number. But the thing is that the error also says set file upload error to error. And then we also have get download URL, upload task snapshot dot ref dot then, and then we have download URL, and then we have set form data, and we have form data, and then we have avatar and download URL. Um, you know, everything seems to be fine. Um, and I'm not sure where this error is occurring from. Okay. So, uh, file percentage. Let's try another image again. So let me just try, let me try this one. How much, uh, I'm not even sure how much MB is this. So properties, uh, this is just KBs. Okay. I, I figure. Now we want at least an MB so that we could see it. This is also 80 KB. Um, let's see this one. This is 36 KB. Don't we have a heavy image? Let's see. Let's see this one. Properties. Okay, this is 289 KB. What about this one? This is also 298 KB. Let's try this one. Okay, I clicked on it. Oh, so you saw it uploading. I mean, the, the text was appearing. <laughs> so this was just a waste. I mean, it was working. But the, the main issue is the header. The header has to be reflected, right? So uh, I'm actually going to go to the header. Um, and I believe we had the header somewhere uh, defined. So uh, about, we have create listing. Um, you know, let's go over here. And look at the components and over here we have header. So let's go here and explore where you were missing the avatar. Why is it not appearing? So we have link. Um, so, uh, you know, if we go, go to the components right there and there we have header. So essentially we have this link to slash profile, right? And I have this current user. I think we defined it here as well. So it's saying that if the current user is existing within that Redux, right? You have this image source as current user dot avatar, and we have alt as avatar, and we have class name as rounded full height seven width seven object cover. And if not, right? If not, let's see. Yeah, 
so if not if that user does not exist then we just have a display of um text slate 700 hover underline sign in and then we have the link i mean everything seems fine i believe that if we just refactor format document okay so what i believe is that this is gonna change once you know i create the update url successful right now nothing is successful so that's why let's go back and fix all of this stuff out so where were we we were in the uh handle change right so we had handle change created and you know it worked really greatly but now <laughs> really good and now what we're gonna do i mean it worked really good right so handle change and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um the next which is um handle i mean change is completed so we're gonna have to go to the form so you see this this is entirely a form this profile this image uh this fields username email password these are this is actually a complete form right here um and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a, a tag for this form we have to call the you know the listener so it's gonna be an on submit listener so it's gonna be on submit listener equal to like that now inside of this on submit listener we have handle change like that okay so now this handle change uh <laughs> i put it right there this is not going to be called handle change at all this is going to be called handle submit this is a different function of course it's going to complain and say where is my handle submit function so we're going to have it created right now so let me just format document i just like you know the format um formatting the document so that it looks nice other than that let's go and uh fix up handle submit for us so also the handle submit has a const handle submit and we have an event and it closes like that perfect and what we're going to do is of course we don't want the page to refresh to prevent the page from refreshing you can do uh e.prevent default like like that so that's not going to refresh but what the thing what we want is we want um we want actually uh, a try and catch so we want try and catches here okay so uh, like i've said like we need um you know try and catch here and in the catch you know we could actually put the catch i mean error so we could have you know in the catch we could have we uh essentially we we can't do much since we have to create a reducer function for the updating updating of each of the things so let's just create the updating reducer thing all right so it's pretty simple very easy we gotta go and we have to change and create reducers so let's just go and we create an we go to the uh fire redux user slice which is in here and what we want to do is we can we're gonna have to create update um user slices so right here right after the you know you can see the sign in what we could do is we could have sign in failure and we have update update user we could start with start update user start uh, s-t-a-r-t and we could put the state and we could put yeah so we could do this let's have that one minute control b and let me for now have all of this okay so we have to create the reducers and we have update user start and we have st uh, state dot loading and that's true again we have update user start and we have update user failure and for update user failure um sorry we have update user start we will just follow this pattern update user start update user success and for the success we have the start i mean the state and we have the action and we could actually put 
the state that current user is action dot payload coming from the server, right? Uh, essentially, correct me if I said database, but I believe it's from the server. Uh, you know, you could still correct me in the comments um, if it's wrong. But state dot loading is going to be false since it's going to be success, and state dot error will be null. So this is going to you know update the user from that, and we also have the last one which is update user and failure update user failure and it's just uh error action dot payload and we also have state dot loading i mean we don't have a comma here so um state dot loading is equal to false okay so now that we have added all these we could just easily export them so we just have update user start update user success and update user failure so we actually could now use it in the profile.jsx right here it's it's all really going to be simple and it's going to be easy to implement so um once we made our three reducers we could import them in our profile.jsx right here so we're going to have import and we're going to have um, update. Am I using any? I'm not, I don't think so. I'm using any. So import update uh, user start. And this is coming from re, Redux user user slice.js. Um, we want update user success. And we have update user failure all of these three things are importing from you know these reducers and we could now use them we could easily use them in this application and the way we could go about this is we have this try and we have this catch correct so um in the catch block and try block we could have the you know reducers created handle submit and uh We'll have try. Okay, and the one thing that we might need is dispatch because we want to call it. So dispatch is also, uh, I, I will have use dispatch. Of course, we need to import that. So let's just, um, first of all, you know, import dispatch as well. Go up here, use dispatch. I gotta believe it's gotta be here. So import, use dispatch from, React Redux, and right here we have const dispatch, use dispatch, and over here in the update, you know, handle submit, we could have, um, you know, dispatch, and we could have update user start right here. Okay, so that's great. After that, we could have the, uh, you know, the API call. So we have await, and we're gonna use fetch, and we're gonna say, um, Essentially, back ticks we used, and we said slash API slash users. Uh, it's actually, if you could remember, it's not user; it's actually user. And there's actually a, a route called update what we created in our recent last video. And over here we have the ID that we have to pass in. So we could essentially get the ID using the dollar symbol and the brackets here, and we could say current user since that's the you know user we're getting and dot underscore id we could get this id and we can say we want to update that person so since this is a wait we have to put this async over here automatically so it should be async okay so now uh right in the update we have some uh parameters we have to give method is going to be since it's uh and a change right it's going to be post it's essentially a change to our head uh, header uh, it's a change to our data and headers uh, you know for the headers you have the traditional content type is application slash json and then in the body section i don't know why it's just adding this random stuff and in the body section what we could do is we could get the um json dot stringify form data all right so the whatever the new form is, this is the request. 
after that you're saying uh send it to the body okay it's gonna essentially go once it's there if it's a if it's a success we'll have response.json all right and we'll get this from the server and we could uh say await to, to this because it's going to take some time and we could have a const uh data variable and assign it like that okay great so now that we have that we could say if the data was a success if the data dot success remember there was some parameter for the data as well if that is false we have a dispatch update user failure and we could put data dot message and return instantly like that and if not we could have dispatch update user success and we could pass the data instead of the user but just the data and over here we could have uh you know the dispatch working and in the catch we could just simply say dispatch uh, update user failure and error dot message just like the same thing we did before so essentially this is pretty good so far it looks really great and i'm hoping now this is going to be updating it so let's go to our browser let's open up inspect and make sure we're in the console okay so let's just uh let's go to the application tab i mean what we're going to do is we're going to go to the network tab and uh, we're going to refresh this once and you can see a lot of things are going in and uh, you know this is the client the profile uh just a second so we have profile okay preview headers all right everything seems good let me just uh i can't sign out so the only way i could uh, delete this is i could go through the application and you know where my cookie is stored this is my actual cookie i could delete this and once i refresh i wouldn't be able to okay I, essentially i wouldn't be able i mean over here maybe the cookie as well as the local storage all right this is a uh, local storage for coding cleverly so we're going to delete this and once we try to refresh we'll go back to the sign in We'll continue with Google. And uh, you can see now we have the ID with that. And uh, we also have in the network tab the Google response. And we got the response like this. Go here. And, you know, if we want to update this, just go and see the headers again cross this out okay so let's suppose we want to change something over here so i'm going to change uh the username to something like coding cleverly this is also being triggered here and i want the email is okay i want the password uh to be changed to one two and three okay so if I try to update this, you could see now nothing happened, but the password is one, two, three. The username is coding cleverly. And if I refresh the page, the coding cleverly is now the real username and the password is now one, two, three, hundred percent, which is crazy because now it's been saved. Um, and if I look, through the you know images if i could just change my image to this t-shirt it's gonna it's gonna quickly change it this uploaded feature and it's gonna upload that t-shirt image upload successfully it should give this response it's here and you know it should preserve it here as well let's refresh this page Okay, then the image has not been updated for some reason. Okay. I think the reason why was that I didn't click on the update button, correct? So let's try one more time. Let's put this one and let's upload this image. 
it's the persons and uh, you know let's now update this now the up image has been updated on the header as well insane insane we have done it all right so now this is great um we, we did a good test here and uh, you know the things are working now let's just add something better make it a little more better so the way we could make it better is first of all let's go to that uh current user remember that you selector that's getting our state we have current user but let's get loading an error as well and we could use it in the button on the bottom so you can see that there's actually a button here um right here this is these are span tags and talking about delete account and sign out but that actually this button which is the update button we want like effect like suppose if we uh, click on it it should say updating all right so uh that's the first thing that i want uh to be updated so essentially let's go to this button and you know have this new effect in it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to this um you know button which is right here and yeah so let's go here and we say it's got to be here yeah over here what we're going to do is we have some conditional render so we say if the loading okay if if it's loading right and we'll say uh we'll say loading and then after that we'll just update uh, if not then we'll have update all right so this is the conditional render and we also have to make the button disabled if the loading is true so we could say if loading is true we could have the button disabled like that and you might be seeing like we actually did handle this loading state as well go on the top you could see uh this loading was there and you know uh those those reducers are handling the job here and uh, you know right now it's update right so now you can see that loading effect so which is really nice okay so the same thing goes for the next thing which is the error so we have this error if you go to the top remember this error we had we could use a similar on the bottom uh for the condition and we're going to have right after the button so if you remember the button um right after the form um so right after the form which is right here and you could add you know a paragraph that says uh that says actually a class name okay that has a class name of let's suppose red text hyphen red hyphen 700 and we have a margin top of five so it's a little good to read and inside the condition we have if it, an error exists right what we're going to do is we're going to say error whatever that message is coming from the you know reducer we'll just throw that out and if not we'll just have this okay so this is going to give us an error message as well if you go to the uh you know here and suppose if you go to the application tab and over here you have you know this user and i delete it and you know oh okay so i actually have to go back here continue with google um i'm hoping i didn't delete this account okay it, it, it normally saves it now you can see that the image has been updated that's crazy um you go to the profile page and suppose i actually um have this cookie stored as well um and over here we have this um you know local storage if we delete this and you know we try to have uh, an update it shouldn't allow me to do that i mean i deleted this delete and okay so what's the username now okay so the it did allow me to update it um i guess it's because 
that uh, the local storage, I mean, cookie is still there. And I, for some reason, I actually can't find the cookie. Um, the reason might be because it's essentially um, within this local storage, but it's not, it's not over here somewhere. Our cookie's name is access underscore token. There, <laughs> man, there's so many cookies. I was just like, if I let's delete this one. Now this cookie is deleted. Let's try to update this uh, and say 333, 222. Update unauthorized. Perfect. Now this, you know, I'm not allowed to update it. So that works as well. You know, because we deleted the cookie, which is great. Now uh, let's go back to this code. And let's add some more things. Okay, so now that we have you know done this part, uh, we have to add the update success because we have to show an issue, a message when you know something has been updated perfectly. So to go there, we could actually go and define a state for this. Right in the states, we were defined all of them. We could have another state, and that state is pretty um, you know self-explanatory and it's going to be called update success so over here we're going to have const we have update success and we have set update success and then we have use state okay and in here we have false okay so Right now we have update success and set update success to false, which is okay. Now the thing is, essentially in the more I mean in the beginning, it's gonna be false the state. And once you click on the, uh, you know, after that successful dispatch, right in the handle submit, after this successful update user success, right, then you set the state set update success to true like that all that's all you have to do um and basically you could add a paragraph on the bottom where we at, normally just add it right now so over there you could just say okay suppose we have the uh you know update so we're gonna have a paragraph here and state that there's uh okay it even pre-filled everything so it's green margin top um margin top is five we have if update success is true, we have profile updated successfully. Not, we'll just leave it by default. I mean, that's all what I had to write. And, um, you know, this would do the job for us, which is perfect. I mean, that's great. And now, you know, if I'm authorized, suppose, uh, let's just go back and you see now this cookie was uh, hard to find, but I found it. Now it's great. Now we have to go back here in the profile section and let's just i mean i don't have any of this so let's just go and back to the uh home let's just go back to the sign in page so slash uh, so, okay i think i deleted that okay right here we have sign in let's log in with google again okay i don't know how much time that but when i log into the google so Okay, I uh, I logged in. You can see my access token is here, which is great. JWT access token. Click on this. We have the username and the password. I mean, the username and the email. Suppose if I want to change the picture to that T-shirt now, uh, it should you know give me the since this is a very small file, it's not giving me the numbers. But at the moment, you know, it should update it. So if you go to the network, um. Okay, I mean the image didn't appear. Oh, 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 it took some time uploading. 88%. I don't know why, probably my internet is slow, but it should be uploading soon. Okay, 88%. It's stuck on 88% really slow okay finally image uploaded successfully this is probably because of my internet connection 
and it should update to that picture. There you go, finally, Avatar came. And what I want to say is, you know, which is fine, you know, coding cleverly should go back to just this. And then we want to update it. If I click on it, profile updated successfully, message came. And this is the response that I'm getting back. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the image is updated on the header as well. And, you know, things are working super cool. 